Hi everyone, in this video we will be going over A-Level Accounting 2023 May-June Paper 2 and question number 3. So Paper 2 consists of 4 questions, 2 of them will be of 30 marks and 2 of them will be of 15 marks and the total time limit given for this paper is going to be 1 hour and 45 minutes. Since question number 3 is of 15 marks, ideally you should be spending about 17 and a half minutes in order to complete this question and in this video as well we will be attempting to solve this question under 17 and a half minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. The following extract from G Limited's statement of financial position at 1st January 2022 is available. So this is going to be our opening balances. We're given equity, um, we're given total equity, and then we're also given information regarding our non-current liabilities. All right, for the first part, we need to state two features of revenue reserves, which do not apply to capital reserves. So the very first thing about revenue reserves is that it will arise from the everyday activities of a business. Let's write it down. Revenue reserves arise from the everyday activities of a business. And the next thing regarding revenue reserves is that we can use revenue reserves in order to finance dividend payments, but we cannot really use capital reserves in order to finance it. Let's write it down. Revenue reserves can be used to finance dividend payments. Okay, that's all for the first part. Now we're given additional information. The directors wish to raise additional finance and on 1st April 2022, the company made a rights issue of two ordinary shares for every three shares held. So we're giving out two new shares for every three shares in the company. And the price is 0 0.35 per share. The issue was fully subscribed. For the second part, we need to calculate the amount raised by the rights issue of shares. So the very first thing that we need to figure out is the number of ordinary shares and the formula for figuring out the number of ordinary shares is that we just need to divide the value of ordinary shares by the nominal rate so let's have a look above the total value of our ordinary shares is given to be 600,000 and our nominal rate is 0 0.25 so we just have to divide 600,000 by the rate of 0 0.25 which gives the number of ordinary shares in the company to be 2,400,000 and the criteria for our right shares is that for every three ordinary shares, we're providing two right shares. So for three ordinary shares, we're providing two right shares, which means that for one ordinary share, we're providing two by three right shares. And we have a total of 2,400,000 ordinary shares. So for 2,400,000 ordinary shares, we'll be providing two by three multiplied by 2,400,000 right shares. So we basically just utilize our unitary concept right here. And this gives the number of right shares to be 1,600,000. Okay, now in order to figure out the amount raised by the rights issue, we just need to multiply our number of right shares by the rate per share. So the amount raised is just going to be the number of right shares, which is 1,600,000 multiplied by the rate per share which is given to be 0 0.35 which results in the value of 560,000 okay that's all for part b now we're given additional information the directors had considered making an issue of debentures rather than a rights issue we need to identify two reasons why the directors of j limited might prefer to raise additional finance through a rights issue rather than by issuing debentures so the very first reason could be that our rights issue is a permanent source of finance. We do not have to repay it back to our shareholders, whereas debentures is something that we need to repay in the future. Let's write it down. A share issue is a permanent source of finance. Whereas a debenture issue is a temporary source of finance.
Okay, and the second reason could be that the payment of dividend is not really going to have any sort of effect on our profit of the company because dividends will be paid out from the profit itself. But the debenture issue will lead to finance charges and an increase in our expenses is definitely going to decrease our profits. Let's write it down. Payments of dividend which we have to make for our shares will not affect the profit of the company whereas debentures will lead to finance charges which will reduce our profit. That's all for part C. Again, we are given additional information. The directors paid an interim dividend of 0.12 per share on 1st July 2022. We now need to calculate the total amount of interim dividend. Okay, this is on the date of 1st July 2022. So let's have a look above. Uh, the rights issue was in 1st April 2022. So this just means that we need to pay out the dividend for our initial ordinary shares as well as the right shares. So let's figure out the total number of shares on which we have to provide this dividend. So initially we had 2,400,000 shares and then we issued 1,600,000 right shares. This results in 4 million. Now, in order to calculate the amount of interim dividend, we just need to multiply this number of shares, so that's 4 million, by the rate per share. And that's the rate of dividend. So that's 0 0.12, which results in the amount of interim dividend to be 480,000. That's all for part D. Now, we're given additional information again. The company made a profit of 535,000 for the year ended 31st December 2022. And for the fifth part, we need to prepare the statement of changes in equity for the year ended 31st December 2022. So we first need to start with our opening balances. So that's just going to be balance at 1st January 2022, which was given above. So the value of rights issue is 600,000. Uh, share premium is 175,000. Retained earnings is 54,000. Let's write it down. So that's 600,000, 175,000, and 54,000. And the total was given to be 829,000. Now we just need to record each of the transactions that took place within the year, which will affect our equity. So the very first thing is the rights issue and rights issue was for 560,000. So let's record it. And remember that our normal rate um, is given to be 0 0.25, but the rights issue was made on 0 0.35, which means that there is a premium. So we have 0 0.25 to be our nominal rate. And since we're issuing it at the rate of 0 0.35, there is a premium of 0 0.10. So we need to divide this amount of 560,000 into our ordinary share as well as our share premium. So for ordinary share, that is just going to be the number of rights issued or number of rights shares issued. So that's 1,600,000 multiplied by our nominal rate, which is also 400,000. Now for share premium, again, we're going to utilize the number of right shares, so 1,600,000. But now we'll be multiplying it by the rate of premium, which is 0 0.10. This results in the amount of 160,000. So we need to record this amount of 400,000 on our share capital, and we need to record this 160,000 on our share premium. So that's 400,000 and 160,000. And the total was 560,000. Okay, then the next thing that took place is going to be our interim dividend. And the dividend will be paid out from our profit. So we just need to subtract this amount of 480,000 from our retained earnings. 
So that's going to be interim dividend. We're just going to subtract 480,000. Okay, so we can see that the retained earnings will not be able to provide for this amount. So it's better to include our profit for the year first. Let's write it down. And it's given to be 535,000. And profit for the year should always be added to our retained earnings column. Now we have enough funds to provide for our dividend of 480,000. So we can just subtract 480,000 from our retained earnings and from total as well. And that is all of the transactions given in the question. So now we can move towards figuring out our closing balance. So that's balances at 31st December. 2022. We'll start with share capital, so that will just be the sum of these two months, 600,000 plus 400,000, which results in 1 million. Then we have share premium, that's 175,000 plus 160,000, which results in 335,000. Then we have retained earnings, so that's 54,000 plus 535,000 minus 480,000, which results in 109,000. And for total, that will be the sum of these four months. That's 829,000 plus 560,000 plus 535,000 minus 480,000, which results in 1,444,000. Okay, that's all for part E as well as this entire question. So if you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.